morning everyone, it's Francis. I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to have a whiteboard. This whiteboard is for 2005 YU55. It's an asteroid. There's the sun. There's the earth. There's the ecliptic plane. The Earth is tilted twenty three degrees. Five degrees off ecliptic plane. Okay, that's what we're talking about. The sun, the earth, the moon. What are we missing? Let me see if I can... Okay. Our equator comes out like that. Let's see how we're going to do this. Tough. The reason why I did two things. What we're missing is we're missing asteroid YU55. YU um, as you can see, the moon rides above the ecliptic plane. YU55 has its approach date. November 8th to Earth, November 9th to the Moon. This number is supposed to be about 220,000 miles, and this one is supposed to be about 217,000 miles. The close approaches. What I know about the asteroid is that seven days before, and now this would be, this is tilted toward the sun. So actually, the south, the, the south pole. I see. I drew this wrong. I see that you'd be seeing more of the Antarctica there. But let's see if I can get to this. Seven days before. There it is. 
YU55. Seven days or November 1st. The equators of Earth and YU55 are together. Y55 is on the ecliptic plane meeting up at the height approximately to the equator of the Earth. Not below Earth a week before, not above Earth a week before, but right equal with Earth a week before. Y55's trajectory, I want to get this right, like that. It has seven days from here to November 8th and 9th. And so you know this is going to be what, what we have to do is this picture is more like this. There's the sun, there's the earth, there's the moon. The moon is coming from around from around the earth, heading around here. The actual passage or path of this asteroid, YU55, is from below the ecliptic, meeting at the ecliptic a week before and then heading out on a trajectory that's going to take it over Earth. Now what's important to note is these, these uh, angles of approach, Earth and the Moon. The Earth seems to be higher, I mean the Moon seems to be riding higher and it's coming around, so I suppose it's on a higher edge of its uh, orbit, making the tops a little bit more equal. So we have a passage here. Now this picture doesn't perfectly represent it because I probably don't have the moon. The moon might want to be up a little bit higher. But what we're looking at is the representation of 221,000 miles on November 8th. And then 217,000 miles, but it's a bad representation on November 9th. That's the way it's supposed to go. It's not coming up over here. This is this is the path. That is not the path. Doesn't show the asteroid in the in the body. Now remember, we're all looking at things from the top. There's the sun. There's the Earth. There's the moon. And what's occurring is we see this, or actually, I, I actually did that wrong, but I can I can change this if I want to do it like this. We have the asteroid. The moon's coming this way, and the asteroid look, appears like it's passing like right alongside. Every time you look at it from the top, you're going to get that perspective, where it looks like the object is coming along right in the same space as the Earth and the Moon. But honestly, that's the passage right there. Seven days before, November 1st, tomorrow, Y55 is equal to our equator and has seven days to make its passage, which has been coordinated and has been the same passage as it's always been so far with JPL and the IAU and the Minor Planet Observatory and everybody who's uh, looking at the orbital diagrams and the coordinates and what they relate to uh, to Earth and the Moon actually when you look at the representation like this it looks like it looks like uh, it looks like it's close close and there's a that great possibility that it's going to hit the Moon which we'll get into a minute and if this alters a little bit, and this is the good rep representation, if this alters a little bit, look at what this shows. Oh, bam, right into the earth, or bam, right into the moon, and look at there, it's going to go on its way. Looking from the top, it looks like that. 
if you just draw the line out. But see, honestly, if you look at this path, the actual path, past, path, okay, this can go out. Let's, let, sorry, just to read you it. That's the actual path. Let's say it moved over a little bit. Oh, let's just move it over a little bit. Now, that's not the perfect representation because it's side by side, but it's still over the earth. So if the earth even pulled it in a little bit closer, it would be over the earth and over the moon, not running into it. This is not the trajectory. This is the trajectory. And so it can actually pull itself in closer to the earth and not hit either one or the moon because we have that other axis. We have that, we live in 3D. The third dimension is the X, Y, and Z axis. This is X and Y, from what I know. This is the path that the diagrams tell us. We'll be out with both telescopes. 25 inch obsession, Dob, Dobsonian, and the Sustron 11 inch eight Edge HD on a German equatorial mount on a Pro CG C Gem mount. estimation YU55 is going to follow its orbital path over the Earth, over the Moon, missing the Earth by 221,000 miles, missing the Moon by 217,000 miles. Okay, I was doing some research, uh, what if research? What if research really, I guess, pertains to, well, uh, what if Richard Hogan's right and JPL and the coordinates are wrong? It's a non-ELE event. This asteroid is non-ELE event. It is locally catastrophic if it 
land somewhere on Earth or uh, land somewhere on Earth that is locally catastrophic, wave heights of three meters to the you know the the, the worst uh, scenario, 19 meters, which yes is very high, but um, not supposed to hit the Earth. Okay, that's that's let's get that straight. So, but but anyways. Anyways, non-ELE events, locally, locally catastrophic, but uh, no Earth axis shift, no change in uh, the day or night, no change in orbit. And for the moon, the moon is non-ELE event for the moon as well. If the object, if, if Y55 is not on its path that it's supposed to be, according to all the coordinates and the rechecked coordinates, then if it were to strike the moon, the moon could handle it. My sources, my gut, my sources tell me the moon can handle it. It's been hit before. But we're going to be out there because, you know, if people are going to say, I, you know, if my friend Richard Hoagland, who, I, who, who uh, is near and dear to me through this astronomy event, wants to say that there's a potential, the possibility is increased 19.5 degrees, that... It's gonna the Y fifty five is gonna come close to Earth and possibly hit the moon. Then I'm gonna be out there with my cameras and the tele with the telescopes that the Cosmic Obsession Observatory has. My dad Bob. Then if that event happens and it's clear nights, then we're gonna be out there uh, with the telescopes to to see it. But I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I know what the, I know what the uh, orbital diagram means when you look at it from the right direction. What the what the orbit is? Close, yes, but heading out and above, out and above, not on the plane with Earth, not on the equator to Earth. We have seven days. I'm gonna draw that again. Yu fifty five. November 1st, the Big E, equator, approximately equator to equator, seven days ahead, and this is heading this way, not like this, so even if it was to come in closer, well I suppose if you come in closer, I mean you can change it that way and come in closer, but still, the moon is over here, or in this way, around Earth. That's how we're getting these close approaches. You see how it's... it's, And that's another thing. I mean, Earth has an atmosphere on it. Now, the moon doesn't. But uh, let me tell you, from what uh, I'm thinking that, it, in order for... Because the way it comes, the Earth is almost protecting the moon. It's still going above it. But the, the way this is approaching, these, these passages are here and here, not, not side by side, here or here. It's just such a difference between this vision and that vision. But anyways, nobody, well, we all know if we follow the correct orbital diet, if you are like me and have faith in the coordinates, because we wouldn't be able to find the object without the coordinates. If you're like me, we have faith that it's going there. It can move one way or the other, and it doesn't mean it's going to hit Earth, because it's still above Earth. If it's brought down a little bit closer, then it's closer to Earth and the Moon, but I don't believe this asteroid could, could really get to the Moon without, um, without its 
you know, interacting with Earth's atmosphere, and then you're still talking about a damp, you know, a ricochet off. You know, these atmospheres, though they're penetratable, penetra whatever the word is, you can penetrate them at some of these angles, like this angle, because it's so shallow. It's a shallow angle. That might be even more steep than that. So, like, let's say it was down a little bit. It's still like a... That's my uh, hypothesis, my... So, what my research has said. So, let me stop for a second and see if I can... Pull out a little bit. I hope everything's on there. Leave it like that. Okay, hey, there you are, here I am. <coughs> Excuse me. Friday night, Richard, uh, Friday morning, Richard blew my mind. And I can't stop Richard from thinking and paying attention to these objects, going with what he thinks. Now, I'm going to tell you that I was just, you know, my my history with Richard is very short with common element. So I don't know what little research I've done, which is I see pictures of him on Nassau, you know, uh, goes on the circuit and does the uh, talks about 19.5, about his tetrahedrons. He's trying to associate these events uh, and his observations, like when he connected his, his an observation made from my image, an observation that I made as well, ice cream cone, not tetrahedron. We formed a connection, and, and through this relationship, we're, we're at this point. Um, Richard believes there's a good chance that it could hit the moon. And then if it does take that trajectory, and that does happen, it, you know, the question is, is it uh, controlled in some way? Or is it just a natural object? You know, for me, it's an asteroid flying through space. I, I know, I can picture it, I can visualize in my, my mind where the orbital path is going to take it above the Earth and the Moon uh, on those dates. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that uh, the asteroid is not going to strike the Earth and the Moon. If that is true, I'm confident nobody's going to get a picture of the asteroid even though we're going to be trying, I, I believe that it's, if somebody captures it, they're probably going to be better than I am at working the telescopes and or the cameras. But who knows? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a result. If it's clear, we're going to be out. If it's clear, we're going to be looking at the moon. If it's clear on November 8th through November 9th, we're going to be broadcasting.